Hello, I'm Graham Lewis and in this really short video we're going to download Fathom from the company portal and we're going to look at least squares lines and regression and uh, hopefully you'll have some fun. So the first thing is to download Fathom. So in the bottom left here you need to type company portal. And then once you open the company portal you're looking for a um, program called Fathom 2 and download that. So um, as this is loading up, you won't see it in mine because I've already downloaded it. But you will see Fathom 2 and download that. Once you open Fathom 2, then you will see something like this. And we're going to put some data into this. So to put a data into this, it's a drag and drop program. You grab the collection and pull down. Notice it's an empty box at the moment. So we need to get some data to put in that box. So you can pause the video because you want to go into unit 7 and go to 7.1 scatter plot activity and in there you will see an excel spreadsheet and i'd like you to open that excel spreadsheet so you can pause the video now go to unit 7.1 scatter plot activity and open the spreadsheet once you've opened this spreadsheet you'll notice there are four sheets at the bottom simple example few numbers car prices with lots of prices of cars and their mileage um, debt in dollars and how much tv hours that family watches in a week and also university marks students real grades gpa at university and what they got at high school their best six canadian courses are english and calculus and vectors and their best four and you get to play with some of those later this class we're going to start with the simple example few numbers so if you can go to simple example few numbers and i'm going to show you what to do and then you can pause the video and you can do it you're going to grab the titles and the numbers of the price and odometer here Control c and then you're going to go into fathom and paste those in now when you go to fathom to paste those in right click paste cases and Bob's your uncle, there it's got full of data. You can see it's full of data. Make sure that this is highlighted because if you have, say, another collection in Fathom, that's highlighted and it's empty. When I pull down a table, my table will be empty, which is useless. So you have to make sure your collection is highlighted blue. So left click on it, then pull down a table and you'll see nicely that you've got all your data of the used price it's in US dollars in thousands of dollars so 14.6 means 14,600 US dollars this is all real data all of the data on the sheet is real car prices debt and television university marks and this it's all real and the odometer reading again this is US data this is in miles so 37.4 meaning that car costs $14,600 and it's done 37,400 miles. So once you've got the price and the odometer, um, then you're going to pull down a graph. So you just grab a graph and pull it down. And what I want you to do, it's really important which one goes on the horizontal axis, which one goes on the vertical axis. And so does it make more sense for the mileage of a car to predict the price that way around? So the mileage, remember the thing that goes on the horizontal is what's predicting. And then this is actually responding to that. And often in science, they call this the, the horizontal one, the independent variable, and the vertical one, the um, dependent variable. And in statistics, we often call them the explanatory variable because the mileage explains the price and the price responds to the mileage. So we call the price the response variable. So. I'm going to ask you to pause the video there and make sure you can draw that scatter plot in Fathom. Okay, hopefully you've all got your scatter plot in Fathom now because we're going to play a little competition. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add a movable line. So I want you to right click and choose the add movable line there. And you can see I've got a movable line. And then I'm going to move my movable line at the ends. You can rotate it. And then in the middle, you can move it up and down until I am happy with where my movable line is. Mm. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to pause the video. You pause it now. So add your movable line. And I want you to be really, really happy that your line best fits that data. Okay. 
Okay, so hopefully um, you've all got your, your movable line on there. Now we're going to find out whose line is the best. This is the kind of competition part. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a measurement for this. So I'm going to right click. Let me just move that up there. Get rid of me. <laughs> right click and I want you to do show squares. And I'm going to make this scatter plot just make this just a bit bigger for you. Okay, so what we've got here is every point they've worked out the vertical distance from that point to the line. So if I look at this point here, say, I'll just highlight that one red there, that point there, they've got this vertical distance here and they've made it into a square. So all of those vertical distances, they've squared them to make them positive, which is a good thing. And then they've added all of those squares together. Now I want adding all of those squares together to be the smallest possible. So I am at, if you look down here, my sum of squares is 1.210. I'm quite pleased with my line. The lower the sum of squares, the better. I'm going to pause it there for you all to discuss who's got the best line, who's got the best sum of squares. Don't move your line around yet. Um, just from your first movable line, who's got the best line? Has anyone beaten me? I had 1.210. Pause the video and have a chat. Okay, competition number two. Competition number two is basically to move your line to get an even better sum of squares, so a lower number. You can see what happens if I make the line really bad. If I've moved the line down here and it's a really bad line, you can see my sum of squares has gone really big, 8.201, yeah? I can make it even worse by rotating it around and have a dreadful line, clearly that's not, that's really, really bad, and that's 14.57. So what I want you to do now is try and get the best line possible. You can make it bad, but try and get the best line possible by moving it around. I've got 1.194. I'm going to stick with that. I quite like 1.194. Uh, see if you can beat me. I'll pause the video, see if you can get lower than 1.194. Okay, well, in actual fact, oops, sorry, just get rid of that. In actual fact, um, there is a, a, a very best line out there, a theoretical best line, and it's called the least squares line, which makes sense. It's all of our sum of squares being least, so the smallest sum of squares. We obviously had a winner in our class. I don't know whether it was me or someone else. Um, we, we, I'm sure you know that now, but I don't know. You can tell me next class. So basically, there is a theory. Now, you won't learn this till you do calculus and vectors um, in the future, but basically the reason we squared the numbers is the squaring function is a really nice function. You can differentiate it. So when you get to calculus, you'll learn how to minimize the sum of squares by setting uh, the derivative equal to zero. So all of that theory is going on in the background, which you're going to learn in grade 12. All we need to do in grade 8 is right click and get the computer to do it all for us, and it's called the least squares line. So I want you to add the least squares line and compare it to your line. You'll notice that the least squares line is actually the same as my line. Um, that is incredible. This has never happened to me before. I obviously got very lucky with my movable line that it was fantastic. So I now know that I either won or was tied for first place because uh, you wouldn't have been able to beat my line because it was the best line already. That's never happened to me whenever I've taught this before, so that's pretty cool. All right, just luck, honestly. So now we've got the very best line. We can remove the movable lines. So I want you to make sure you've got the least squares line, you've compared it to yours, and then you can remove the movable line, and you can also remove the squares as well. And you're just left with the least squares line. I'll pause the video um, for you to do that. So just to remind you again, add the least squares line, compare it to yours, how close were you, and then remove the movable line and remove the squares. So you've just got the very best least squares line showing. Okay, folks, and that's it really. Um, what you get to do next, if we go into Excel, is you're going to play a, a correlation game. Oh, and I should mention that quickly as well. Apologies. Here we've got a correlation number, r squared equals 0 0.7. Now, correlation, what we need to do is take the square root of that 0 0.7. So if you take the square root of 0 0.7 to get the r number, because that's the squared number, you get 0 0.84 roughly. 
So that's a, a good high correlation. But because it's going down, we don't call it positive 0 0.84. We, we take the negative square root. So it'd be negative 0 0.84 because this is a negative correlation. Now, um, there's a correlation game that you're going to play. And correlation is a number between minus 1 to 1. And it measures the strength of the, the uh, linear relationship. That's what correlation is. So what you're going to do next is follow the instructions uh, in the in the lesson plan, the course plan, and you're going to have fun um, playing the guess the correlation game and trying to beat each other so you can get the highest score. Um, in that, you can see my high score was 101, so you can see if you can beat me. And then um, you can also then choose either car prices debt and TV or university marks and fill out this chart and try your hypothesis and just follow the instructions there. Okay, thanks very much everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of this class.